Hey guys, how are you doing? I just wanted to um, hop on. I don't think I turned the light up. Anyway, I just wanted to hop on today and um, talk a little bit about consecration and momentum. Um, hey guys, how are you doing? I see I, I see people popping up at the top of the screen. I don't know what's happening. Hallelujah. Anyway, I just wanted to, hey Stacy, how are you sister? Um, I just wanted to hop on and, and see how everybody's doing. And I know this is like you're having the most epic week ever, 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 ever. Um, and just talk a little bit about consecration, put a little bit of meat to the matter um, a little bit. Talk about momentum that's happening um, in November. Hey, Tanya, I see you. Um, and um, that's basically it. And then do a little bit of prayer if you don't mind. Uh, there's some things I'm, I, I, I see. And I just wanted to pray over you guys real quick if that's cool with you. Um, so first best week ever. I pray this week is being good to you. I pray that you are being good to this week. I pray that you are decreeing over your week, that you are declaring over your week, that you're living every day full and in high expectation, full and in high expectation. Yes. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about, um, the consecration. Um, we've done this for the last two years. We've been on Periscope for, going into our third year. So we've done this the last two years. Um, hey, Brian, I see you. I'm going to reach out to you. I'm going to reach out to you because I, I, I want to see if Refuge can come and, and undergird what you're doing in Louisiana um, in 2020. Um, anyway, the encounter, the encounter in Louisiana. So if you're in Louisiana, please check that out. This is the real deal. Um, I see you, Brandy. I see you, Donna. Um, so consecration is going to be 90 days. I want to kind of put some context to the document because it could be confusing. Um, an old church I used to go to, we did this every, um, the last quarter, um, I didn't make this up. And, um, even when I transitioned out, I just kept doing it. Yep. I just kept doing it. And so I just invited everybody to kind of come along and do it with me. And so a lot of times you'll see everybody at the top of 2020, they begin to do the 21 day fasting. Last year, we went right from the 90 day consecration. Hey, Sonia in the building into 21 days of fasting, but the, it was really 21 days of praise. We last year came into 2019 praising God for what had happened over the last 90 days. So um, the purpose of the consecration, the purpose of the fasting is to draw close to God. Hey, sister, I see. I love you. I love you. I love you, Johiza. Um, it is to draw close to God. We're not trying to manipulate the hand of God. We're not trying to enforce our will upon the Internet here is really, really bad. I'm in uh, upstate New York near Canada. It's real bad. So if it goes in and out, just kind of bear with me a little bit. But um, we just want to draw close to God and we want to understand what the will of God is for us going in to 2020. We don't want to be figuring it out the first 21 days of 2020. We don't want to be um, cleaning out the pipe when we cross over into 2020. As you guys know, the Hebrew calendar, we're moving into um, a new year, if you will, already. And so we want to, the first uh, 30 days of the 90 days is going to be repentance. It's on the document. We're going to be dealing with false prophecy. We're going to be dealing with uh, receiving false prophecy, running to get prophecy. Listen, these are things that we need to openly repent for. Um, when we've lusted after certain things that were not inside of the will of God, when we were consulting man before we consulted God, we want to go back and we want to fix these things and we want to close the door. Because if you see, it's momentum in the release. And so we want to get moving when we understand what momentum is. Once you get going, then you're unstoppable. That's momentum. So when you think about a snowball or the snowball effect, the snowball effect is so powerful because of the momentum. You cannot see momentum, but you see the effects of momentum. And I think most of us have been stuck in, in, in dimensions and cycles, if you will, of delay. And so we're, we're always like fighting just to get, you know, a, 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 a little bit forward or we, we boom bust cycles, if you will. And so if we could get the momentum going, then it takes less energy. It takes less force. It takes less to keep 
moving. And that's where we want to be. But we want to make sure that we're moving in the God direction. Come on, guys. And so the first 30 days, we want to repent and unentangle ourselves from anything that is not the God direction. I know we don't hear, we don't talk about this a whole lot, but could it be that the Father is not answering your prayers, my prayers, our prayers, because they're not his will? They're just not his will. We're trying to force the hand of God into something that's not his will, or we're trying to manipulate the building. We're trying to manipulate the construction. We're trying to manipulate the heart of God to work in our favor. And the safest place for us to be is right smack dab in the middle of the will of God. So we need to take 30 days to dismantle, to pull up. We need to take 30 days to just repent, unentangle. Um, there's going to be a, I'm going to talk about it in a minute. There's going to be a periscope, a private periscope room. We're going to do deliverance. We're going to walk through deliverance prayers. You know, this is something we got to fast before we do this. Bless Jesus, bless Jesus, bless Jesus. So we're going to go into fasting and we're going to all get on and we're all going to get on one accord with one accord and we are going to intercede over one another as we stand in the gap for our families and our lineage. We do not want our lineage going in the good direction. We want our lineage going in the God direction. We we don't want our marriage going in the good direction. We want our marriages going in the God direction. And so we need the mind of God. I always say you can do what's right or you can do what's righteous. There is a line of demarcation between right and righteousness. There's a lot of right things that are going on in the earth, but it's not necessarily righteousness. And so the Father is calling us, I believe, into a place, a walk, a road of righteousness. And so we may have been doing the right thing, but have we been doing the righteous thing? Repentance means going in the right direction, turning and going in the other direction. And the other direction is the righteous direction. So for 30 days, we're not just going to say, oh God, I'm sorry. Oh God, I'm sorry. Oh God, I'm sorry. That's not the totality of repentance. The totality of repentance of repentance is to understand what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and why this is not the will of the Father. And so we're going to get all of this stuff off of us that has been holding us, that has been the open door for delay, that has been the open door for confusion, and before we move into any deeper level of revelation. I believe that when there is entanglement, but also the release of revelation, that these two things war in our life. I just believe that. I believe that the Father is releasing revelation. Revelation has with it and brings with it the key to the lock. But what happens is that when I have a covenant with the lock and then the key comes, I am warring between two outcomes. Sometimes we just got to sit down in the midst of everything and we've got to look at the lock, the cave, the door, the box, whatever is keeping us bound. And we've got to get some understanding about this thing, why it doesn't work. Is this thing holding you back? Why do you keep going back to it? And then we've got to decide I'm leaving this place and I'm not going back. Come here, Lot's wife. I'm leaving this place and I'm not going back. The minute she turned around, that turnaround, that moment of turnaround, that moment of remembering, that moment of romanticizing, that is a kick into the knee of God, if you will, because he's bringing us out of, but we're lusting, we're longing for something that's comfortable, that has really been a hindrance and an open door to our delay. And so anyway, I said all that to say, praise Jesus. The first 30 days is going to be deliverance. Listen, when we do this 90-day consecration, we're doing this as a community. You are not on your own. You are not fasting on your own. You are with a people. We will pray with each other. We will stand in the gap for one another. When you're praying for yourself, you're praying for the whole community. When the community is praying for the community, we are praying for ourselves at the same time. I believe that in the first 30 days, we are going to see break out and breakthrough at levels we've never experienced before. So the first 30 days is repentance. The next uh, 30 days in November is going to be about momentum. 
It's going to be about gathering energy, gathering. When I talk about energy, I'm not talking about new wave stuff, new age stuff. I'm talking about the definition of momentum. It's actually, when we talk about energy, it's actually power. It's power. And so we're talking about gathering the power to move the body forward. That's the actual definition of momentum. Gathering power to move the body forward. That's why I believe this 90 days is going to be so powerful. It's, it's gathering power. It's moving in power to move the body forward. And so the Father is saying we're praying for the hands of the harvest so that we can move the body forward. This is about the assignment of God. This is about a release of authority of the Father. There's a difference between power and authority. I believe the Father wants to mantle us with both. We pray for power a lot and we leave off authority. Very two different things. Two very different things. I believe the Father is going to establish us in authority. And authority is the foundation to momentum. It's the foundation. Because here's the thing. When somebody is walking in authority, let's take a king or an, a noble or official or something like that. They have momentum in terms of they're very, there's very few things that can undercut them. They're not dealing with a bunch of variables that can mess with their presence, that can mess with their uh, authority or their permission level with what they're doing in the realm that they've been given. Come on, kings. You have a territory or a realm that you've been given. But when we do not walk in authority, when we do not house authority, what happens is all of the variables can come and fight with you. So what does this look like? When I don't have authority, I can be drugged into court for every little thing. When you have authority, somebody brings charges against you, but because I am who I am and I'm walking in a particular position, seat, or authority, I ain't even got an answer. I didn't, they, they will get, receive an auto responder that says, listen, you can't do anything about this. If, if, if you have a house and the city comes in and they say, we're taking up two feet of your land to build a sidewalk, you can send all the letters you want to the county and say, this is my land. The county is going to send you a letter back and say, the authority, sorry, this this city or county has the authority to take two feet of your land to build a sidewalk, boo-boo baby, it's over. You have no leg to stand on. There is an out, there is a ranking system with the authority. I believe after repentance is going to come um, authority. And so here's the thing. God can mantle you with direction. God can give you instruction. God can point you in the direction. But if you don't have authority, you're not going to be able to sustain where God is taking you. You're not going to be able to stand in what God has given you. Come here, Joshua. And so they move, and the children of Israel move into the promised land. And here it is, a huge wall surrounding a city, the city of Jericho. It's the wall of Jericho. And, and here it is, the, the 2.5 million come in. All of the, the people who live in the land are hearing they're being invaded. The land of milk and honey is being invaded by the people who are supposed to be in this land. They were invading. 2.5 million people cannot tiptoe in somewhere. That's an invasion. So here it is, this big walled city. The people are behind the city. There's no way into the city, but they have a promise. They have authority. Come on. They have authority to be there. So on the grounds of obedience and authority, God empowers them. I need y'all to see this. Because they had authority, the power of God, the dunamis, the dynamite had to come to them. Why? Because they had the authority by the decree of God to be here. And that's why they could march around the wall. And on the seventh day, the wall falls down flat. When you keep reading the Bible, the Bible says that the fame of Joshua, the authority that had been invested into Joshua by heaven, by the hand of God, went out throughout the region. So it meant whenever Joshua would roll up on a territory, the people would begin to tremble because they understood God was on his side. So it wasn't just about muscle. It was also about authority. Authority undergirds the muscle. Authority undergirds the power. I believe after we repent, God 
hallelujah, is going to restore our authority. I'm in a hotel, so I'm trying to bring it down. I believe the Father is going to restore authority to your lineage. He's going to restore authority to your household. He's going to restore authority to your voice box. He's going to restore authority to your finances. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. And so uh, the, the momentum about gathering, and but you're going to understand that I've got this authority and I've got this power and it's because I am the hands to the harvest. Come on, I am the hands to the harvest. I've got work to do. And so when I say yes to the work, an authority comes upon my life. An authority comes upon the works of my hands. And so when we are repenting and we're saying yes to the will of God, yes to the decree of God in the righteous direction, the authority will come upon us and then the power will come to our hands. And then you are really going to understand what it means to be unstoppable, what it means to be unstoppable. It doesn't mean that you're never going to come up against a fight. Listen, listen, God is a God of just scales. God is a God of equity. God is a God of just scales and balance. God is not going to give you power in a place that you don't need it. God's not going to give you authority and a land that you don't need it. The only reason why you have the authority is there are going to be ranking and ruling voices that will try to overstep their boundaries. And God says, I send you, sent one, I send you to a territory with my authority. Come here, ambassador. Come here, magistrate of God. He says, I, I set you in a place and you stand as the authority of my word in this place so that these ruling voices, these ruling entities cannot overstep their boundaries. And so it doesn't mean, come here, Joshua, that you won't have to fight sometimes. It doesn't mean that you won't have to march around the walls of Jericho. It doesn't mean that you won't just be in the land and nothing's ever going to try your life and nothing's not going to try your finances. It means that when it comes, when the weapon comes, you ain't got to worry because you have authority and you have power. And so I believe after we get through October and we move into November, we're really moving into momentum momentum, the gathering is actually going to be in November in, in Maryland. I pray you come. In December, that's when we're going to move into the release. The release Come on, guys, of the dunamis, the power, the intel, the instruction, the anointing in your life and on you and upon you, and then you being released into your real assignment. That's what I believe is getting ready to happen in December. I believe that when we cross, I see this every year, I believe that when we cross over into 2020, when you cross over into 2020, you're going to be living months ahead of your peers. I believe God's going to give you insight as to what's going to happen in your market. I believe God's going to give you insight as to what's going to happen uh, in your business sector. He's going to give you insight. Why? Because you've been breath to breath with the Father. Consecration is the setting apart of an, of an item, of a person, of a community for the use of God. And so we're saying to the Father, we set our lives apart. We want you to use us. We want to say that you have a vessel in the earth. You have vessels in the earth that you can pour yourself in and then you can pour us out. God, pour yourself into us and then pour us out. God, pour your word into us and then pour us out. God, pour, pour your revelation into us and then pour us out into the land. How can the land know the revelation of the Father if the revelation you of the Father is not poured out into the realm of the earth? And so in October, you're going to begin to say yes in the place of I am going God where you want me to go and I'm not going to fight you anymore. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to have an opinion. I'm not going to have an opinion. Listen, I'm coming from a very personal place. I'll talk about this um, in the private place uh, and, and, and on the Periscope room and, and when we're inside of the consecration. But this has been where I've been. I have been fighting in a place I, I, I would never say no to God. Like, no, God. You know, I'm not that big and that bad. But I, I do have a tendency. I'm just telling the truth. I do have a tendency because of where I've come to sometimes drag my feet. Or, or when I look at something to try to redefine it, I'm just telling the truth. 
And so finally, you just get in this place with God and you understand that the character of God is not going to bend. God is not going to change his mind. And when he looks at you breath to breath and says, can any of my plans be thwarted even by you? And so finally, you've got to look at some places in your life and say, I'm tired of this. And the father says, well, when you're tired of this, come here, Esau. When you get tired, you will break this off of your neck. When you get tired of this, you will really say yes. When you get tired of this, because you really don't understand what I'm doing, you have a little finite uh, definition of what you think is going on. You try to put me in a box. You try to put my revelation in a box. And then you try to say what you're going to do with your very own life. And the father says, no, it's not going to happen because your life is also my plan. Your life is the plan of God. I need you just to, to soak in that for a second. Your life, you being here, is the plan of God. And so when we begin to do what we want to do, when we begin to rock how we want to rock, when we begin to roll how we want to roll, can any of my plans be thwarted? And so here it is. We'll be fasting. And we'll, oh, God, I need to hear. I need to understand why this is not going in the direction it looks like. I don't need to understand why this keeps happening and this keeps happening and this keeps happening and this keeps happening. I rebuke, I bind. I rebuke, I bind. I rebuke, I bind. I rebuke, I bind. And the Father is looking saying, you can rebuke and bind all. You need to rebuke and bind yourself. And that's just where I was. I'm going to be 100. I'm not going to talk about what it is right now, but I'm going to be 100 with you guys when we're in consecration, right? I'm going to be 100. What happens when the father says you need to rebuke and bind yourself with your holy tail? And so you can call out or call everybody you want to call everybody on a 50 day million, 50 million day fast. It ain't going to change. It ain't going to change because your life is my plan. And so anyway, I believe this consecration is going to lift things off your children. I believe this consecration, some of our children are going to come into the place of ministry. I believe our children are going to come into the place of their own authority and the place of their own calling. And the I, I believe it. I believe it. So anyway, 90 days. How this works is you are going to decide what you're going to give up. You Food and water. I don't do, let me rock back and forth like your wear, mama. I don't do this newfangled fashion where you fast from Facebook and you fast from Twitter and you fast from, I don't, I don't believe in that because Facebook, Twitter, TV, you don't need that to live. You don't need that to live. You need food and water to literally live. You will starve to death or you will die of dehydration. These are things that you need to live. That's a fast. Hear me now. In every distraction while you're fasting, we need to address. We need to address the distractions that fight us in the place of our communion. I'm not going to use the word discipline. I'm not going to use the word discipline. Communion. What? fights with me meeting with God in the morning? What fights with me meeting with God in the evening? What fights with me fasting? What fights with me uh, studying my word for an hour or two a day? What fights with me knowing him in another dimension? I'm not going to say discipline. Why? Why? Because discipline sounds like religion. Discipline sounds like law. I'm going to say communion because of Jesus. I get to be breath to breath with the Father. And so over these 90 days, we are going to get back in that place of relationship. We're going to get out of that place of, you know, this is I lay on my face for 50 hours a day. I fast. That's work. If you don't love it, I'm, I'm praying that the, that the Father would give us back the joy of our salvation, the joy to your worship, the joy to your prayer life. Come on. That intercessors would lay on their face, not because we got to pray for the nation, uh, and then your face gets wrinkled, and you your, eyebrow, your eyebrows are down here. You don't have bags under your eyes. These are your eyebrows because you're, you're so scrunched up. Mm, I'm praying. Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm praying. Mm. No, that's not communion. That's not relationship. For the people who are married, I gotta go on date night with my husband. Mm, this is me loving my wife. Mm, this is that's crazy. 
Come on, guys. And that's what we do to God all the time. We got to get back discipline, people of God. You're going to have to get back on the wall, people of God. You've got to pray. And if your hair turn gray, you just keep praying, people of God. I don't want I don't, I don't to know. The Bible says that Moses came down the mountain and the people couldn't look at him because his face was so radiant. Come on, guys. Being in the presence of God changes. If it changed his physical appearance, can you imagine what it did to his spirit? He was in that mountain fasting. And the, the Bible says that the finger of God wrote the Ten Commandments on the tablet. Can you imagine the adventure he had with God? God. And so I'm praying that over the next 90 days, God will build a nation of intercessors who like to pray. Who like to pray. Who love his presence. Who love his voice. I believe that's the key to getting this nation back to pray is we haven't liked it. It's been some arduous task. Ah, we got to pray, pray. Ah. Who wants to do that? You look mean and old and ugly. And then we feel like we're not praying enough because prayers aren't getting through. It's about relationship and communion and being in love. And so that's over 90 days anyway. That's number one. I am asking the father out the gate to restore the joy of our Yeshua, our deliverance, our savior, our salvation. Come on guys, that a love affair would arise in the nations and it will be played out as prayer and testing and finding him in the scripture. Oh my gosh, that love affairs of poems and poetry will be written to God at the 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 12 p.m., 1 p.m., that we would live in the place of prayer. We would live in the place of his presence. I ain't got time to be mad with you and offended with you because I am with the king. That's what I'm praying is going to happen for us. That 2020 is going to be so different because we are going to be on fire about our savior. Hallelujah. So anyway, you're going to find something you won't give up. You're going to, we're going to fast food and we're going to fast drink. We're going to fast from stuff. So you can fast all 90 days from the same thing. You can say, in November, I'm going to give up meat. And then in October, I'm going to give up, I don't know, rice. I don't know what you eat. And coffee. And then in December, I'm going to give up rice, coffee, meat. And then in December, I'm going to add to it. That's what I do. I always add to it. Or you could just do one thing, right? If you have a sugar addiction, this is the best way to break it. Now listen, can I just be 100 with you guys? Let me let me take it to the river. Let me so y'all so we could be baptized. Let me tell the truth. When I was first doing these consecrations, I would always try to give up sugar. I talk about this sugar addiction I used to have. And I, I would fail. I would fail around Halloween time <laughs> when the candy would go on sale. I'm just being honest. I'm just gonna keep it 100. Love Jesus, love Jesus. Lo I love Jesus. I did. I had a sugar addiction. And only the father was gonna be the only one to break me. But I always failed and when I failed I would repent and I would try again and I would do okay for a couple days and then I fall off and I do okay for a couple days and then I fall off and it wasn't until about um four years ago that God broke it but I still went on the consecration I'm just being honest every single year and I gave up everything else I could give up meat I never went back to red meat I could give up um I don't know Sugar was the main thing, but I would give up everything else. I could do regular fasting. I went on a 40 day fast. You know what I'm saying? But when it came back to say, I'm going to give up sugar, I was always fought in that place. But really, guys, I was really fighting with addiction. I was really fighting with addiction. It's really fighting with addiction. I mean, alcohol and sugar, you know what I'm saying? Sugar changes your brain just like alcohol. And so I could not do it on my own, but I didn't give up. Whenever I would fail, I need y'all to hear me, I would just run to the Father. I can't do this. At first I thought I could, 
And I was like, I can't do this. And so at, at one time I thought I couldn't give up coffee. Sure did. Gave it all up. Gave it, gave up coffee. Now I don't even really drink a whole cup of coffee. I just like the smell and the warm cup. I was never the same. I gave up bread after I gave up bread. I was, I never went back to bread the same. Listen, if you're going to give up something that is a, a real addiction, be honest that this thing is, has a, has, has, is a stronghold. And it's really hard for, for people. I pray. I know Jesus. But you also have a stronghold, boo. You also have a stronghold. So if you have a stronghold, especially around food, Christians have a hard time with food. You have a hard time with food. We have a hard time with food. Why? I don't drink, bless God. I just eat 12 Twinkies a day. We have a hard time with food. I'm being funny, but it's a thing. I don't drink that alcohol. I don't drink the wine. But I have 14 cups of coffee every day. Good, right? So it's a stronghold. It's a stronghold. If you need to give up chicken, you know, if you need to give up meat, some people have a, you can't get off the meat. Like the meat is really a thing. They feel like they ain't ate if they ain't had a piece of meat. Hallelujah. And so if French fries, whatever it is, say, okay, God, I want to give this up because I understand that this is not, I'm killing my body. And I understand that my reasonable sacrifice is to present my body as a living sacrifice. Not do we like we like to use that around sex. You gotta present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Right? And so we usually we usually talk about that about sex. But here's the thing: God wants to use you, but those arteries being clogged because of the fried chicken. God wants to use you, but you ain't had a cup of water in five months. You drink water when you brush your teeth. God wants to use you. God, God's going to send me to the nations. Hallelujah. I'm going to the nations. Yes, I am. You're not going to the nation with them clogged arteries and you don't drink no water. No, you're not going to last long. You're not going to last long on the road, boo. You're not. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I've been traveling now for, this is my Fourth week, I have presented every day. Um, I present. I've presented every day for the last. What's today? Wednesday. For the last nine, eight days, except for one day. Except for one day. I'm going to the nations. I'm going to the nations. Boo boo. I want to go to bed. I want to go to bed. You're talking about these getting on planes and, you know, baby, like, world traveler, world traveler. No, I'm on Southwest with my knees up to my nostrils. This is me on the plane. This is me on the plane. My knees up to my nostrils for about five, six hours for these flights. Looking crazy, sleepy, tired. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Just be honest. No, no. And so we want to go to the nations. We want to do these big things. We want to do these. And God's saying, I got to get you. This is the first leg. This is the first leg of it. You got to be able to steward money on the road. Let me rock back and forth like your grandma. Let me rock back and forth. Let me rock back and forth. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You can't go to the nations for 10 weeks at a time and you don't know how to steward a dollar. You buy in everything and then you got to take care of everything at home. So the team, they out, they went out to eat. Me, I'm in my room talking about take me to the wall. No, because I gotta go home and gotta pay a light bill. Listen, Linda. Right? Anyway, so there's a lot of things that go into these big picture things that we want to see. There's so much we have to steward. There's so much we have to steward. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna fast from food and drink juice we don't need that juice if you drink wine and beer and all that stuff listen i ain't finna get into the you know listen listen linda you know if you say i need to give it up i don't care what it is we're not gonna put one addiction if you smoke a cigarette that ain't no different from overeating or eating too or eating too much sugar or, or not taking care of your t it's the same thing it's the same thing amen amen 
So we're going to fast. We're going to pray. You saw the document. There's an email in that document. Don't respond to the thread with your email address. We're not going through the thread pulling out email addresses. Email the email. We need your email because we are building a private Periscope room. I am not doing Zoom. Zoom is weird and it's flaky. So I figure if we get on Periscope, that's that platform is pretty sturdy, but it's going to be private. It's not going to be when we get on Periscope and everybody named Mama can come. No, and I don't want to inundate the wall because not everybody's going to be going on the consecration. We're still going to get on the wall. We're still going to pray. We're still going to teach. We're still going to have a great time. But I want to do some, some teaching just for the consecration. I want to release another book of prayers connected to Momentum and the consecration. So I'm going to put a pin drop right there. If you come to Momentum, you are going to receive a book of prayers. Now listen, I'm going to put this book of prayers on Amazon, and I'm not going to tell people when it's on Amazon, so it's going to be like 99 cents. I ain't going to lie. It's going to be like 99 cents. It's going to be 99 cents because I can't do it for free because I am not binding the book because that's going to be cost. That's going to be a cost, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to write a book, and I'm basically going to give it to you for nothing. If you are doing this consecration, we want to offer it also to you. Um, we're not trying to make no money. We're not trying to get rich out here on writing prayers and all that kind of stuff. But we want to release another book of prayers that is connected to the summer of identity that we just came off of. Um, that we just, right. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying, Jehoshaphat. You got to do do what your lifestyle, but make sure it's your sacrifice. That's why we're not going to tell you we're giving up this. No, 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 no. It's got to be your sacrifice because then it becomes religion. It's got to be your sacrifice and then you stick to the vow that you made with the father. We're going to have accountability partners, but you stick to your vow. So we need your email because I'm going to release teaching. That's You will know when it's released and it will be a private link. We will put the teaching up on YouTube, but it will be in a private link. It'll be in a private link. We need your email for when we get on Periscope, for prayer, when we do the deliverance. We're going to use the email to let you know the dates that we're doing anything. We're going to take communion together. I take communion every day. I take communion every day. I take communion every day. My children take communion. As often as you do this. As I... As often as you do this, <laughs> first Sunday of the month is not biblical. As often as you do this, right? So we're going we're gonna to take communion quite often. Listen, if you want to build that into you, your thing, that's you. You can get it on Amazon for like $21.99. Get you a box of communion, boo. Or get you a thing of grape juice. Listen, do what you want. That's something. So, um... The document's out there. The email is inside of the consecration document. If you have any questions, either hit me up in the inbox. Chastity Drummond. Chastity, I don't know if she's on here. She's on here. Um, put, you can put the email for the consecration in, the, in. You can hit her up in the inbox or you can just email us. And somebody will get back to you. I'm not real good with emails. I ain't finna lie. Let me just, let me just set that right there. I'm not. Chastity be all up in the email, and I know she'd be like, she don't ever, I don't, my my thing right now is that I got like 70 million, 70,000 emails on my thing right now. I have 79,000 emails in Yahoo right now. Listen, okay? But we will get back to you, um, or if you just hit me up in my inbox, but you got to go put your own email in. You're going to have to do your own fasting. You're going to have to show up for prayer. You, you're going to have to participate. We are doing this as a community. Amen. So momentum, you come. We've got we've been releasing some of the speakers. Um, Apostle Karen Rushing, Dr. Yolanda Powell, Dr. Alexis McClinton, Apostle John Maurice, and myself will be your facilitators for momentum in November, which will be held in Maryland. This is not going to be church. This is not going to be where your red bottoms and put in a whole bunch of hair. Mm -mm. This is you may not even want to wear eyelashes and makeup. We are not coming to be cute. 
wear jeans and a t-shirt, jeans and a sweater. Um, David L. Johnson II has released a CD. He is the official, uh, he's going to be on the worship team. This is the official sound of Momentum, the, the CD, the soaking music. We're going to have prayer watches. So when we're not in session, we're going to be praying. We're going to be praying specifically family, government, jobs, nations, health. We're going to be praying specifically for two days around the clock when we're not in session. This is going to be clinics. This is going to, this ain't going to be stand behind a podium, preach three points. No, no, no. This is going to be people who are going to, who have an established prayer life. This ain't about the, the title. An established prayer life. Dr. Alexis is the only person who was under the age of 40. Why does that matter? Age doesn't matter. It doesn't, but it does when it comes to prayer. It does when it comes to prayer. Why? Because there's wisdom in the road of prayer. What do you do when you go through seasons of prayerlessness? And anybody who's been an intercessor for any length of time, you will be fought. What do you do when you go through a season and you just don't feel like it? What do you do when you go through a season and you've come out of a season and you've been fighting so hard and it's hard to catch your breath because it feels like your chest is broken from the battles? What do you do? How do you pray for your family when your family walks away from you, including your children? So the stripes of life and, and the person keeps going back to the place of prayer that's why that matters, because experience is a thing. I'm sorry, life experience is a thing, and you keep praying, you've been homeless, and you keep praying, you've been divorced, and you keep praying, your children left you, and you keep praying, you got kicked out of your church, and you keep praying, won't nobody talk to you, and you keep praying, don't nobody know your name, and you keep praying. It matters. And so these are voices of wisdom. I don't even know if I'm going to teach. I don't even know. I may do some praying. I, no, I will do some praying. I'm going to do some praying. I don't even know because I want to give them the whole day. It'll be two speakers per day. The third day, because it looks like momentum is day, it's three days. Sunday is overflow. We're going to be at Dr. Yolanda's church. She was so kind to open up her facility. So we're going to do church together. We're going to have an Acts chapter 2 experience. So if you can stay, everybody's going to be staying. Everybody's going to be worshiping in one place. We're going to be an overflow of what God just did. John Maurice, Apostle John Maurice is coming from France. All of us are going to be in the place worshiping the father together with the with with the newfound wine that he's poured into our vessels i'm telling you it's going to be bananas so day three is an overflow day where we will worship together where we will seek god together and we're going to see what god's going to do so again momentum this ain't about you know uh having star preachers there's nothing wrong with that you know not, i'm not i'm not gonna nobody this ain't about making money we're not making no money all of the speakers all of the worship leaders have agreed you know to put down honorariums they're not doing any of that they want to do this because they believe this is what the father has said to do yes we've got to pay for hotels and planes and blah 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 but the father's going to do all of that you know he's you know what i'm saying so it's ain't going to be we're going to raise thousand dollar offerings we're going to do this we're going to do that we're going to let the you if you sow into these people you sow into these people but god is going to be the one who told you to and he, he gave you direction to we not holding we not do we Okay, we're coming to seek the Father. So November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. It's going to be bananas. It's going to be bananas. You will get all of the teaching. If you're there, you get it all. It's all yours for free. It's yours for free. If you don't come, we're not offering it. It's not, it's not going up anywhere on any platform for sale. It's not for nothing is for sale. The book, nothing is for sale. Nothing's for sale. If you're there, all of the, yes, registration is $100, but you're going to walk away with everything in that experience. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Hallelujah. So I pray that makes sense. If you have any questions, again, hit me up, email, Chastity will hit you back on the email. Um, I pray that you join us for consecration. You have to put your email in the document. 
We're getting ready to release all of the stuff for Momentum. I know you haven't seen flyers. You know, I'm just not like the regular person. You know what I'm saying? We about to put a flyer out for real. We about to do it the right way. But registration is already up. Listen, whatever you got to do, if you got to take a, a, you know, a caravan of people, y'all all hop in the car together. Y'all all stay in the hotel room together. We're not going to be in our hotel rooms. We're not going to be in Airbnbs long. We're going to be all together in the house of God, praying and, and learning. And, and, and there's, I believe there's going to be a lot of deliverance. I know what I see. I believe there's going to be healing. I know what I see. There's a ton of hotels in this area. Um, if you go on the Eventbrite, uh, Chastity already put up some hotels. I think they're giving us some for a discounted rate. Also, there are great Airbnbs, fantastic Airbnbs in this area. And they're all like 15 minutes away from the meeting spot. You're not going to be in your hotel room. For these, for Friday and Saturday, we are going to be, if we're not in a session with a facilitator, we are going to be having prayer watches and soaking sessions and moments of healing. We are going to be together. So we're going to be fasting. Let me talk about this. We're going to ask the moment your feet touch the ground in Maryland by airplane or car, begin fasting. Whatever that looks like for you. Our team, we've, we've already agreed that we're going to do water fasting. We're going to do water fasting. We, uh, I'm telling you, please don't put no eyelashes on. Please don't buy no wig. Listen, just tie your hair in a headscarf. Don't even put no makeup on. We are coming to seek the Lord. We're going to, on the schedule, you may actually see, this is, I know you may have never seen this before. It's going to say, go and take a nap. Literally, instead of lunch, because we're fasting, it's going to say nap time. We're going to have a soaking session or a prayer watch going on. But deliverance and healing and revelation is glorious. And the physical body can only take so much glory before the physical body needs a nap. So go take a nap. On the schedule, it's going to say nap time. Like sit in your car and nap or <laughs> sit in the church, nap. Bring your kids. We're gonna have, we have a couple people who are bringing kids. Bring your kids so they can sit under glory. If any deliverance breaks out, we will have a place where we will deal with that out of, out of the main you know, area. We believe in honor. We believe in you know, uh, uh, dignity. We believe in all of that. So you'll see in the schedule, we'll say, go, go take a nap. Go take a nap because we're going to start early. Who knows when we're going to end? But you're going to be receiving, I believe, so much revelation. It's going to be, we're going to be in the middle of our consecration. We're going to be hearing from the Father. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be glorious. And for real, we're we not coming to be seen. We're not, listen, listen, I'm, I'm wearing jeans and Uggs and a t-shirt. <laughs> and that's it. Listen, I, we not listen, Linda. So anyway, so if you have any questions about consecration, email. If you have any questions about momentum, the Eventbrite has been out. You can, the registration has been out. We're going to talk a little bit more. You, you saw uh, Apostle Dr. Yolanda this week. You saw Apostle Karen Rushing. Uh, uh, John Maurice is going to be the following week. Dr. Alexis is going to be the following week. So you're getting a taste of the speakers. No ego, no superstardom, just real, raw relationship with God. I believe it's going to change everything. It's going to be crazy ridiculous. Okay, so anyway, so I want to pray for you guys. I feel like the Lord is highlighting uh, two things that he's healing um, in this season. So I don't know if this is for you, if it's for you, if it's not, and you have a friend or a loved one who is dealing with these things, then call them and you pray for them. You call them and you pray for them and you release the word of healing. I believe the father is, is healing feet issues, feet issues, feet issues, like ankle to the feet from the ankle bone to the foot, like, um, falling arches, um, bones in the feet, Achilles heels, um, breaks in the ankles, runner, if you was used to be a runner and you had running issue, um, any arthritis that's in the feet where you're just, it just hurts. Maybe you wore heels too much in your younger years. Maybe you, you had a job where you stood on your feet 
the long periods of time and now you're you're in pain in your feet a lot of times or you wake up and there's pain in your feet you wake up and your arches are in pain and you you know you're wearing weird shoes you you know you're not wearing shoes that you could anymore you you don't know what you should do if I should go see a foot doctor I believe um, that the Father is healing feet issues feet issues and so I just want to pray if you have foot issues, if your feet hurt, if you walk in funny, if your ankles hurt, if your heels hurt. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your healing virtue being released upon this prayer wall. We thank you, Father, for all the feet connected to the wall and all of the people who are assigned to the people who are on this wall in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you were healing feet. We thank you, God, that beautiful feet upon the mountains are being healed. We thank you, Father, that it is not a thing of age. And even where we did things, even standing up wearing the wrong shoes, that you will reverse these things, that you will renew our youth. You will renew the youth of, in the feet. Hallelujah. You would renew youth in the feet feet in the name and in the blood of Jesus. So we plead the blood of you. We receive hallelujah, the grace and the healing in the feet and in the foot and in the ankles and in the toes and anything that is associated with arthritis, anything that's associated with cartilage and stiffening of the bones. Yep. Just receive it. Just receive it, stiffening of the bones, especially in the area of the feet. We thank you, Father, that as we're hearing the Holy Spirit say, he says there's going to be a gradual, it's going to be a gradual release. It's going to be gradual healing. And so what you're going to notice is you will feel, you won't feel pain, but you'll feel stiffness. And then what you're going to notice is that the stiffness is going to lessen up. And so you're going to wake up and then one day you're going to be like jumping out of the bed and you're not even going to realize that the pain is gone. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, we just receive this. We receive youth in our feet. We receive youth. We receive vitality. We receive, God, you restoring health and wholeness in our feet, in our ankles, in our heels, in the name of Jesus, even knee issues. We thank you, Father, that you are restoring knees in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm hearing the Lord say something about ingrown toenails. Ingr I need to read a book. Um, ingrown toenails. There's something going on with your toenails. I, I don't know if it's, if it's an infection or if it's getting ready to be infected. Um, but the father says that he, he's even going to heal. Something's going on with your, something's going on with your toenail. Something's going on with your toenail. There's a, there's some pain in your toenail. The father says that he is healing that. We decree and declare over knees. People who have knee issues. Uh, you, when you walk, um, down the, the, the stairs, you hobble a little bit. You have to hold on to the, um, to the rail. Listen, this has nothing to do with age. This has nothing to do with age. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, specifically over these next 90 days, we thank you, God, that you will relieve weight off of the knees. That even over these 90 days, that people will lose weight. We're not doing this consecration. We're not fasting to lose weight. But, Father, we thank you for the benefits that come along with giving up certain things. And so, Father, we thank you that you will reverse the effects of what we've done in past seasons as we embark in a new season with authority and power with you. And so, God, you you need our knees to work. You need our knees to work so we can walk this out. You need our knees to work so we can run this out. You need our knees to work, hallelujah, so we can go here and there and do your bidding in the name and in the blood of Jesus. My thing is getting ready to go out. I'm sorry, guys. Hold on one second. All right. And so, Father, we just receive it now that our knees, our feet, our ankles have been healed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for stomach issues also. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you that you are healing digestion issues and stomach issues and onset of ulcers. 2019 has been a year. It has been a glorious year. We're not going to name it anything else. It has been a magnificent year, and with that has come some strain and stress upon our bodies. And so even the strain and stress of worry, a lot of us, a lot of us, you have been under a cloud of worry. You have been under a cloud of anxiety. You have been under a cloud of this thing, then that thing, jumping from the pot to the frying pan, so to speak, in this realm of the spirit. And what it has meant to do is to cause issues in your physical body, and the place that took a blow was your stomach. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
process, the digestion, the large intestine, the small intestines, the pancreas, the whole process, the esophagus. We thank you for healing and wholeness in all of this area in the name of Jesus because we understand that disease will spring forth in that place first. And so where the weapon of disease is trying to be formed, we just decree and declare your word, hallelujah, over us tonight that says you are God who heal, who, who, who forgives us of all of our sins and heals us from all of our diseases. And so Father, we repent where we let distress and stress cause us to be in a place of worry, anxiety, and fear where we, we pray, but at the same time, we were hesitant. We prayed, but we still wandered. We wandered around the, the answer. We wandered around your character. We ask for forgiveness tonight in the name of Jesus. We're asking you to seal this door for the next 90 days. <laughs> Let worry, fear not have any part on our doorstep. Let it not come nigh our dwelling place in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, to put a wall around our health. We ask you, Father, as we go into this time of fasting, that, Father, anything that would try to come and throw us, that you will begin to station your angels around our lives right now, that we will do 90 days and there will not be any worry and any anxiety, that there will not, there will be an ease of use handling life as we walk this thing out. Hallelujah in Jesus name. So Father, we're asking you to reverse the effects of the physical body in the place of the stomach, the digestion you thought I mean, the Lord say, you thought that you couldn't eat like wheat and dairy and all that, you know, we shouldn't be. You that you couldn't, you was getting older and I just can't, my digestion. Dude, that's a lie. That is a lie. And if you said that, we bind that up in the name of Jesus. We release the blood of Jesus upon those words to eradicate, not to cover, but to eradicate. No, 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 no. Your digestion, your stomach, all of these systems that work in your stomach together to uh, to send things where they need to go and to expel things when it needs to go, that it's working properly all the days of your life, that your body will not slow down as you get older. God is not governed by age. God is not governed by time. Those things do not govern the power of God upon your life, does not govern the authority of God upon your life. Your age has no bearing on the word of the Lord. Your age has no bearing upon the touch of God upon your life. Your bearing has no age, has no, your age has no bearing upon the blood of Jesus. It is pure. It is not, uh, these variables do not affect what God said, do not affect the power of the blood, the power of the name of Jesus. And so that's what our belief system is built upon. And so where we've spoken anything else, when we have agreed with anything else, we sever it now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that as we roll into these 90 days, hallelujah, that we will get our vitality back. For those of you who feel like your energy has been low, you feel like you've been really sleepy, you've been dragging, you're trying to work out a little bit more, drink a little bit more water, but you feel really, really uh, listless. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You feel listless. We thank you, God, that through prayer and fasting, whatever was causing this listlessness to come upon our mortal body, we thank you, God. God, that we serve a God that the same power that raised Jesus is the same power that will quicken our mortal body and so we receive it and so we decree upon this wall for the next 90 days the quickening power of God the quickening power of God upon our mortal bodies upon our mind our acumen come on guys our cognitive abilities the quickening of the father come upon us in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And with that will come joy. With that, when we're listless and we don't have energy, our joy is on deplete. And so may your joy be full in these 90 days of fasting. May it not be arduous. May it not you not drag your feet. May you not be yearning for January 1, 2020. But will you be caught up enraptured with the love of God? Caught up and enraptured with the communion with Christ. Caught up and enraptured with rolling and chilling with Holy Spirit over these 90 days in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we just thank you that we are um, coming, uh, September is coming to a close. We bless you, God, for everything that has happened these uh, months in 2019. We thank you, God, that you got us here. Preservation of life, preservation of family, preservation of health. We thank you, Father, that we understand that there is yet much assignment in us, that there is much assignment for us to do, that there is much assignment for us to engage in. We understand that there is another dimension, that there is a another place. We understand God that you are using us to a whole other momentum that we had no idea. We believe that we are smack dab living right in the middle of Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that worketh in us. It is your power and we bless you. We bless you for your power in us, your explosive dunamis power, your authority in in us, coming out of us, that it is crashing into you over these next 90 days. I bless you, God, for transformation, transition, and transfiguration over these next 90 days on this wall for the people of God in the name of Jesus. Miracles, signs, and wonders, be it unto you, God, in the earth realm. Signs, miracles, and wonders, God, for your namesake in the earth realm. Oh, your kingdom come, your will be done in us, in the earth. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. On the earth as it is as it is written, as it is declared, as it is uh, uh, in the blueprint, as it is in the mind of you, as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. So Father, we honor you, we bless you, we praise you, and we say to you, King of glory, it is such an honor to seek your face. It is an honor to pray. It is an honor to be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. So I love you. I love you. I pray that you guys have been enjoying um, the 6 a.m. prayer. I pray that you've been, enjoying, been enjoying the best week ever. I'm so grateful to everybody who said yes. When we asked, you know, do you mind lending your gift, your voice, your heart, your revelation, your experience to the wall to pray for us, to teach us, to love us. So to everybody from Apostle Karen to Apostle Anna Randall to uh, Apostle Yolanda Powell to Apostle John Maurice to Dr. Alexis McClinton to our prayer wall team, guys, the people who keep the wall running Thank you. The people who get up at 6 a.m. and sacrifice their personal prayer time to pray for us. Thank you. It is no small thing. It is no small thing, right? I don't believe, you know, um, and for the people, I think they can, you know, if I'm lying, they'll say it means that's not true. But um, for the people who we do ministry, the prayer wall and we do life with, I don't believe that there should just be one person doing the work. I don't believe that there's a spotlight on one person. I believe that when we do that, what happens is we, we limit the movement of God. We, we limit the voice of God. So I'm always pushing people. I'm always pushing people to speak. I'm always pushing people to pray. I'm always pushing people, you know, to teach. I'm always pushing people. And I know sometimes they feel like I may be shutting them, but we, we need what God has given you because the, what God has given you, I need. And then what God has given me, you need. And so when you say and I say, he says, right? And so we're getting the total picture, right? We're getting the total picture. So I don't believe it's a one-man show. I, this is not the Ani show. This is the Holy Spirit show. And so every, every display of every person who says yes and who, uh, who prays for us at every watch, who, you know, everybody's working, everybody's got a business, everybody's busy. Listen, people are getting up at 5 a.m. The prayer wall closes down at 12 a.m. And so people are on it. And we sometimes, you know, we miss a couple of things every now and then because we got kids and we got dinner and soccer practice and jobs and businesses. But to everybody who is so consistent, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We actually have a couple more spots that have just opened up on the wall. Um... So if you're interested in being a prayer partner 
We would love to have you. We, we don't believe in anything, you know, arduous. We're not going to be demanding. We're not going to take up all your time. We're going to try our best to pour back into you. Um, we're going to, there's a whole other room we have for our prayer partners. You know, we do prophetic exercises. I need to hop in there more and, you know, pray for them. But, you know, we really want to love on you and push you and, and see where God is taking you so that we can undergird the ministry, your ministry portion, right? Your ministry portion. So it's not just about, you know, this ministry. It's about also your ministry. And so what can we do for you and how can we serve you while we have you? Amen. So if you're interested, hit me up, hit Chastity up, Angela um, Scott, Angela Scott, Chastity Drummond, or myself, and say, hey, I want to be a prayer partner. There's a, like a little bit of a rigor, clearly, um, just to see, you know, if it's going to be a good fit. Um, and if the season changes and you can't do it anymore, you can't do it anymore. You know, we I always say this about Periscope, but now I'm going to get off because I don't want to hold you. Um, if I get on Periscope and there's nobody on, it's okay because that means that you're out doing life. I pray for our family that is always on. You know, we have a really consistent family. And so for two and a half years, consistently, we have been on Periscope, the same people, two and a half years. And I said, I yearn for the day I get on Periscope and there's nobody on because everybody's doing life. You're doing what God is telling you to do. You're out there doing ministry. You're out there doing marketplace ministry. You're out there doing, you know what I'm saying? I can't wait for that day. And when that day comes, I'm just going to get on Periscope and I'm going to be with me and myself and I cracking jokes. Still pray, but it's okay because it's not about numbers. It's about the people, right? It's about the people. And so, you know, I believe that one of our calls um, with this ministry is to provide a safe place for you to expand and explore and education in your gifting, not to hold you down, not to use you, not anything. We want you to be so much better, so much fuller, so much uh, excited about where God is taking you once you transition on from us. So if you're interested, please reach out to one of us. Um, we, we've got some spots opening up and as 2020, uh, uh, we walk closer to 2020. We know that there's even going to be some more um, momentum added to uh, the prayer wall, and we just want to make sure that we do this in excellent and that it's excellence and it's covered adequately. So we hope you join us. I love you. Please sign up because we're going to start releasing the calendar for the consecration for when we get together for prayer, special teaching. Um, communion, uh, a couple of nights of deliverance, right? Um, any written prayers, you know, I have a blog. I'll probably start blogging back more on my website. Um, but I will be emailing you personally. I will be putting a whole bunch of stuff in the prayer wall because we don't want to inundate the prayer. We want to keep our assignment here clear and succinct, but we also want to keep our assignment with the consecration clear and succinct also. Amen. Amen. So I love you guys. You guys have a beautiful night. Good night.